Hey everybody, it's Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to our RuneScape 2007 1-99 RuneCrafting Guide. The goal of this guide is to teach you a few methods on how to level your RuneCrafting at any level. There are a lot of different runes that you can make for XP, these are just the methods that I prefer to use. Let's start off with a few quests. First of all, you have to do Rune Mysteries to unlock RuneCrafting, but it's a super simple quest to do, no worries, it shouldn't take you like more than 10 minutes. I would also suggest doing the Abyss mini quest before you really get into training. You're gonna need to do this mini quest if you want to use the Abyss, which is a very important training method for RuneCrafting, and it also gives 1k RuneCrafting XP, which will put you to 9 right away, so you might as well do this before you start even RuneCrafting. There's some other quests that give RuneCrafting XP, and I have left a link in the description to a list of those quests, but the, the, these are the only two that I really think you gotta get done. The rest, that is up to you. If you don't know exactly how rune crafting works, each type of craftable rune has an altar that you can take some rune or pure essence to, and you can turn that rune essence or that pure essence into runes. Rune essence is only workable on non-members runes, whereas pure essence you can use on any rune. So I would really just suggest using pure essence because it's super cheap. I'd like to talk about essence pouches quick. These pouches can hold extra pure essence so that you can make more runes per trip. You can obtain these pouches by killing abyssal creatures inside the abyss. This can be done with melee stats as low as the 30s pretty well, but clearly the higher combat you have the better. You can just plow through them to really collect your pouches. A lot of players argue that the smallest pouch is not worth using because it only holds 3 essence, which only saves 2 spots and requires a little bit of extra banking depending on how you do it. I always bring all the 4 pouches, it's really up to your discretion though. Pouches do eventually degrade, and they can be repaired by talking to the Dark Mage in the center of the Abyss. You can also use the NPC Contact spell from the Lunar Spell book to speak to the Mage. One more side note before the leveling guide, training runecrafting requires a lot of running, so if you have higher agility level and graceful clothing, it's extremely recommended. Also, while running in the Abyss, having higher levels in agility, thieving, mining, even woodcutting and fire making can prove to be helpful, so if you happen to have a higher level that's good, but you don't necessarily need it. Let's jump into the leveling guide. From levels 1 to 9, you're going to want to craft air runes. The air rune altar is just south of Falador. You're going to need to use either an air talisman or be wearing an air tiara to get in. Clearly, if you're using full graceful, you're going to have to either decide between the full set or the extra inventory space. You could also just use the abyss to get to the altar, but that's really not necessary for air runes. Levels 9 to 14, you can move on to earth runes, which aren't an insane increase in speed. And overall, these are pretty short levels, but this will help you out a little bit. The Earth Rune Altar is just northeast of Varrock, near the Lumberyard. Levels 14 to 23, I would move to Fire Runes. Fire Runes could be decent XP, because you can use Dueling Rings to cut down on the run time since the Altar is just north of the Duel Arena. For a typical Fire Rune trip, what I would do is teleport to Duel Arena. Once you have your setup, run up to the Altar and make your runes, and then teleport to Castle Wars with the same ring, Dueling Ring and then uh, go back to the duel arena and do it again. At level 23 you can make lava runes, which are actually the best XP in the game at one point. But at this point, if you're only level 23, you can't use all the pouches yet, so obviously you're not going to get the full XP quite yet. For lava runes to work well, there's a lot of things that are needed. They're, they're fairly complicated compared to the rest of runecrafting at least. I would suggest having 82 magic for the magic imbue spell and the lunar spell book. Also, I suggest having a rune pouch to hold your runes for the imbue spell. You could also wear a steam battle staff for your fire and your water runes. And you have to bring earth runes with you to combine into lava runes and a binding necklace for a 100% chance that you make a lava rune when you try to do it. You can make lava runes at the fire altar, so you just need to make the same run as when you're making fire runes, just with a few extra things on you. And when you get to the fire altar, you can use your earth rune on the altar to make lava runes, as long as you used that magic imbue spell. If you're not using the magic imbue spell, you need to bring some talismans with you, and it's just really not worth doing lava runes at that point. If you can't do lava runes, or you just don't like the run for any reason, which I can understand, I'm not a big fan of them myself, you could just continue with fire runes all the way up to 44 runecrafting. Keep in mind, even though lava runes are very good for runecrafting XP, you can lose a lot of money doing them too. From levels 44 to 77, you should start making nature runes. I would use the abyss here without a doubt because the nature altar isn't really that close to a bank or a teleport, and the, the abyss is just a much faster way to do it. Making nature runes is one of the best non-combat money makers in the game. Once you hit 50 runecrafting and you get another pouch, you can make 500k plus an hour pretty easily once you get the hang of it. Once you get to 91 and you can make double nature runes with all of the pouches, it's very doable to make like 1.2, even up to 1.5 mil XP, depending on the price of nature runes, of course. 
Running the abyss is pretty simple. There's a slight amount of time spent in the wilderness, but whenever you enter the abyss, you are going to get scolded, so I wouldn't take anything too expensive. Your graceful is safe at this level in the wilderness, though. Don't worry. You should also bring a pickaxe. A black pickaxe is suggested because it's the lightest one, and higher tier picks don't make any difference in here. I'd also bring a glory to teleport back to Edgeville when you're done. That's really the only reasonable way to bank. Once you teleport into the abyss, you'll be on the outer ring, and there are a few ways to get into the inner ring. I personally use the agility, the thieving, and the mining shortcuts myself. But there's also a woodcutting shortcut that you could use if you have an axe, and a fire making one that you could use if you had a tinderbox. Obviously, the higher level you have in these, the better chance you have of getting through. The agility is the fastest one, though, because you can just rapid click your way through it and you don't have to deal with an animation. The Nature Rift is on the northern side of the inner ring. Go ahead and craft your runes, tell you to Edgeville, and start over again. At level 77, you can now make Blood Runes in Zaya. You do need 100% Ar Arceus House Favor, almost blew that one, and 38 Mining and 38 Crafting. Also, if you have less than 80 agility, you're likely going to find yourself walking a good chunk of this. So, 80 agility not required, but highly suggested. Again, make sure to bring a pickaxe. This time, you're also going to need a chisel with you. To make blood runes, you need to get dark essence fragments. To get these dark essence fragments, first, you're going to need to mine some dark essence blocks from these mines. Once you have a full inventory, you can take the blocks up to this dark altar, where you can turn them into dark essence blocks. And then you can chisel those Dark Essence blocks into Dark Essence Fragments, which can now be turned into runes. You can't do more than one inventory of Essence blocks into Fragments, but you can go back and fill your inventory with more blocks before you go to the other, uh, to the Rune Crafting Altar, excuse me. So basically, the trip is Mines, Dark Altar, Mines, Dark Altar, Regular Altar, Craft the Runes. I would use blood runes all the way to 90 rune crafting, but there is another method beforehand if you don't like bloods that much. At level 82, you can make double astral runes, so if you want to take these all the way to 90 instead of blood runes, that works very well. You need to complete the lunar diplomacy to make astral runes, but once you can make double runes, you get about the same XP rate as you would with blood runes, but over a mil per hour in profit. Obviously this method is a lot more click intensive though, so if you're a fan of AFK and you don't mind making a little bit less money, just stick with blood runes. At level 90 you can now make soul runes, which are crafted just like blood runes. You just need to use a different altar once you've gotten your essence fragments. I would take soul runes all the way to 99 because they give a pretty decent XP rate and they're pretty AFK too. I, it's a really good mix of the two. At 91 you do start to make double natures though, which are nearly half the XP but like 10 times the profit. So it's kind of up to you. If you want to make a lot of money, double nature runes are the way to go. An alternative to training rune crafting is the Arunia altar, which I'm not 100% sure how to say, but it's also referred to as the ZMI altar, so we'll stick with that for this guide. To use this altar efficiently, you are going to need to use the ZMI altar teleport, which requires 71 magic and the lunar spellbook. There are a lot of strategies to running the ZMI altar, since the path you want to use for good XP has a lot of powerful enemies in it. Higher defense is very recommended for the altar, plus a lot of people even use protect from range while running it. And if you're watching my runs, I actually have a little bit of a combination of prayers. You just want to make sure you're watching the enemies around you and just try to pray for them as much as you can since there is an altar in your running path so you won't run out of prayer points. First of all, make sure that you use World 327 to use this altar. That's where a lot of other players are running the altar so you won't get hit as much. You can bank at the beginning of the run for a cost of 20 of any rune. So you can right click and talk to this banker to set which rune you want to pay. And then make sure you just have a lot of those runes on you at all times. In the runs that you're watching, I have some body runes in my rune pouch. And that's what I'm using to pay the banker. The amount of XP that you can gain from the ZMI altar depends on your level. But at any level, it turns out to be a pretty good XP rate. And you are going to profit while you're here. So if you don't like any of the other runs for rune crafting, this is the choice for you. Once you hit level 59 rune crafting, you can also make double cosmic runes. And if you have 75 rune crafting, you get a giant pouch, and these turned out to be a pretty good money maker. So, this is the only money making method that I have for the end of the guide because we already talked about the others, the main being nature runes. But if you're between the 59 and 91 rune crafting area and you want to be making as much money as you can, double, double cosmics, excuse me. I should say up to 82 because double astrals are a little bit better, are a pretty good way to go. So that is a, an alternative method for some money making, which runecrafting is one of the better money making skills, so you're probably looking to make some cash here. 
that is all of the information that I believe you guys need to know for 99 room crafting. If you have any questions or other comments, be sure to leave them in the comments section below so I can get back to you as soon as possible. Again, I don't quite have the same ability as I used to with annotations to update the video after it's been uploaded. So I will use the description to update any information that I may have missed because sometimes I do miss information as I am human like the rest of us. But I hope this is enough information to get you guys on your way. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do hope you got some helpful info out of this. And best of luck with your room crafting.